Hey everyone, so today's video is a video that Kelly Gooch inspired me to make. She filmed a video just like this over on her channel, so this is not my original idea. I did sort of take this concept from her. I thought this was a really cool idea to go through my collection and pull out the brands or the products, I guess I only, the brands I only own one product from, and I do have quite a few of them, because since there are so many brands that I want to try, I find that I sort of only purchase like one product from a brand at a time almost. So there were a lot of brands where I had like two or three products, so I could do a similar video to this about brands that I only own like a couple products from, but I just wanted to keep it or narrow it down to brands I only own specifically one product from. I'm basically gonna be talking about whether or not I wanna try more products from the brand based off of the product that I already own. So there are quite a few products and these were the products I have from one brand that are that I have with me at school because I don't have all my makeup with me at school so there are still a bunch of products I have at home where I only own one product from one brand so I do have more products than this from one brand one product from one brand that's so like wordy to say but anyways let's just go ahead and get straight into this video so I'm just gonna kind of randomly pull products the first one is a Violet Voss and Laura Lee palette. So Violet Voss, I initially wanted to try. I feel like their eyeshadow palettes were kind of hyped up a long, long time ago, like back in OG YouTube days. And I did end up purchasing this more so for the color story than for Laura Lee, but I do really, really love this palette. I feel like Violet Voss is a brand that hasn't, or has never really talked about like, do they even come out with new products? Because I feel like they've just had the same products in their line for like ever and they mostly only have eyeshadow palettes. So while I do really, really love this palette, nothing from them really intrigues me and I'm not really interested in trying anything else out from them. I guess I'll go ahead and talk about the other eyeshadow palette. This is my Sigma Warm Neutrals Volume 2 palette and I do really, really love this palette. Again, it's another more neutral palette. I got this not super long ago, but I was dying to try out this palette and Sigma in general. There are definitely other Sigma eyeshadow palettes that I want. I feel like Sigma creates some really unique color stories and color stories that aren't necessarily already on the market. And I just love the way they curate their eyeshadow palettes. So I am kind of intrigued by the Untamed palette as well as the Enchanted palette. I'm not sure if I will ever end up purchasing those, but those are some palettes from Sigma that have been on my wish list for a really long time. And I feel like Sigma used to only have eyeshadow palettes, but now they're starting to come out with some more products and they have like lip products and I don't even know what else they have to be honest. I feel like they, they're also another brand that don't come out with a ton of new releases. I know that their brushes are really hyped up, so potentially I may want to try some of their brushes one of these days, but I do really, really love this palette and I wouldn't be opposed to trying more from Sigma. Next up is a newer product to my collection. This is the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush in the shade Nutcracker. So I do use this as sort of a contour bronzer shade and she has a ton of shades in this. She has highlighting shades and mostly like blush shades. This is a brand without even like trying this product. I already know I wanna try more from. I haven't used this a ton and I think I've only used it like once or twice, but I already know there are other brand or other products from Danessa Myricks that I do want to try, including more shades in this specific formula. Obviously, I would like to try this out some more and get a more solid opinion on it before I purchase more shades in this. But like, like I said, this one I use as more of a bronzer contour, whereas the shades, the other shades I want to purchase are more blush shades. Pretty much everything in Danessa Myrick's line intrigues me. There are a ton of products that I do want to try from her. And I guess it's not necessarily just based off this product, but just knowing what else she has in her line, there are a ton of other products that I would like to try from her. Next up, I have a Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush. This is in the shade Diffused Heat. And actually, this is not one I only own one product. I was thinking I would include this because I do own another mini blush of theirs. So it's like kind of the same product, it's just another blush. But then again, I do also own their bronzer, which I forgot about. So this one is kind of cheating. 
but Hourglass I just think is kind of overhyped, especially for the price. There's not really anything else in the brand that I want to try out. This is kind of, I guess, just a bonus brand. So yeah, while I do really, really like the, br the blushes and the bronzer that I own, I don't think I would really purchase anything else from Hourglass. I'm kind of skipping around here, but next up a gloss. This is the iconic London lip plumping gloss in the shade Nearly Nude. I don't own like anything else from Iconic London and I did get this in a BoxyCharm so I don't know I was never really like looking into the brand in the first place so I don't really know like what products they offer. There are a couple of their products that I've heard talked about like I think their contour bronzing wand or like stick thing I don't know that's similar to like the Charlotte Tilbury for some reason that comes to mind I don't even know if that's a product that they own. Maybe I'm thinking of another brand, but Iconic London is never really a brand that's intrigued me. So they're also more on the pricey side. I'm like, haven't really heard much about their products either. So I just don't know much about them. So I'm not against trying anything else from this brand. I just feel like I wouldn't really end up purchasing anything else from this brand. I am glad that I have this gloss in my collection. I do really love it, but I don't, it doesn't necessarily make me want to look more into the brand and try more of their products. Next up is a, another gloss from Tower 28. This is in the shade Cashew and 100% even without even trying this gloss, I knew I wanted to buy more products from Tower 28, similar to Danessa Myricks. Also Tower 28 doesn't have a ton of products in their line. So like the main things I'm interested in is trying more shades of this, which I'll probably, if anything, only end up purchasing one other shade. And even then I might wait until I finish this one off. So I know I want to purchase more gloss shades, but I also want to try some of their blushes. So I already know I want to try more products from Tower 28. They are a brand that really intrigued me and they are like clean beauty. So they're good for your skin as well. And I just think Tower 28 is a really great brand. Like I said, they don't have a ton of products out. So really the only, I'm only interested in a couple products, but I still would love to try more from them. And I'm excited to see what else they come up with in the future. And then we have my RMS Beauty Living Luminizer Glow Quad. This is the mini version. And I used to have another RMS product, but it, it just didn't match my skin tone. So I basically got rid of it right away. And this I have really, really loved. I love all of the shades in here. I like that I can get use out of all of the shades in here because normally I don't really like face palettes for that reason because I can't always use all of the shades. But I have really, really loved this. And like I would consider purchasing one of these, like, cause you can purchase each one of these individually. I would consider, consider doing that, but I don't think I'm really ever gonna end up finishing this off just with how much makeup I have in my collection. So I'm happy to have this in my collection and I do really, really like RMS Beauty. They are more like luxury priced. So I don't know if there's like a ton I would want to try from them. Like I'm not really super intrigued by anything else in their line at the moment, but I wouldn't be opposed to trying more from them. And I am really interested in this brand. Like I do keep my eyes on sort of what they release and what they have in their line. So I could potentially end up purchasing more products from this brand in the future. Next up, we have a Lila B lip oil. This is in the shade Be Elegant. I got this in a Clean Beauty set from Sephora. And I have used this quite a bit. I've had it for a while in my collection. I just, I don't tend to purchase like high-end lip oils. So this is a product I feel like I wouldn't normally try out or purchase on my own. Lila B again is another clean beauty brand. So they're more on the luxury price tag. Their products do look really pretty and aesthetically pleasing. I feel like they're just so overpriced. And this is the only product I've tried and I tend to stray away from high-end luxury lip oil and lip products in general so i feel like i just wasn't wowed by this product so it kind of makes me almost not feel like it's worth it and not really want to purchase more from the brand just because i feel like they're so overpriced and you can get so many good products at the drugstore these days However, a product that I do really, really love and makes me want to try more from this brand is the Ilia Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment. This is in the shade Before Today. Again, this is another one of those Clean Beauty Sephora brands, so they're more on the high-end price tag. But I do really, really love this, more than I was expecting to, and I got this in actually the same Clean Beauty Sephora kit that I got the Lila B in, and I just really, really love this liquid blush. It, like the formula of it feels luxurious. And I think 
while I probably wouldn't purchase this like at full price, I do really, really love it. And I'm definitely interested in trying more products from Ilia. I also don't really purchase anything at full price, so that doesn't mean much, but I would definitely be interested in trying more products from them. And I already have some products that are on my wish list like their skin tint specifically, and I can't think of any of the other products right now or if there is any, but I know there are a few products from this brand that I would like to try out at some point. So again, this is a brand I definitely would like to try more from. Next up, we have my Kaja Beauty Bento Trio, like Shimmer Trio. This is in the shade Rosewater, and this is another one where I do have two shades of this, so it's kind of cheating, but it is like the same product. And Kaja is a brand I feel like is really innovative and they're more like inexpensive brand at Sephora. So they're not like a super high price tag. So this is basically just a little trio of three shimmery shades. And I do really, really love this. So I would be interested in trying out more from Kaja. There's already been multiple products of theirs on my wish list for a really long time. So I know probably eventually I will end up trying more from Kaja. Another brand, I feel like the products I own, what, or the brands I owned one product from are more like luxury high-end, which really shows like I don't tend to buy a ton of luxury high-end. And it's something that I've gotten into over the past year or so, a little bit more just trying out like one product here or there. So this is the Lime Crime Software Blush in the shade Flash Drive. This is a very interesting product. I don't have anything else like this in my collection. And I use this kind of as a blush highlighter type of do, I guess sort of like a blush light. So if I am using this, it's probably a really minimal makeup look. And I just wanna throw something really quickly on my cheeks. And this can act as a blush and a highlighter in one. So I have really enjoyed this for very specific occasions. And Lime Crime was a brand that really intrigued me, which is why I end up ended up just purchasing this product. There were a couple other products from their brand that interest me, but I don't know. This isn't like my favorite product I've ever tried. So, and there's not, I feel like there's not a ton of products in their line either. Like they mostly have eyeshadow palettes and I feel like not a ton of other products, but I haven't done like a lot of research on them. So I also only looked at the brand on Ulta. So like they might not have as good of a selection, but I do like this. I wouldn't be opposed to trying more from Lime Crime. I do really like them and I'm in intrigued in the brand. I think their packaging is really, really pretty and really unique as well. So I would be interested in trying more products from them, but just based off of this product, I'm not like dying to get my hands on more products from them. We are getting down to the last few products. So next up is my It Cosmetics Brow Power, which this is actually empty. I did finish it in a project pan. And it's hard to believe that this is the only product I own from IT Cosmetics. I feel like, again, they're a brand that doesn't have a ton of products or they kind of mostly fo focus on base products, which I tend not to pay attention to with high-end brands. And like the main product I think of from them is their IT Cosmetics CC cream that's always talked about, but I'm not really interested in trying that. I don't know, I did like this brow pencil. They're just a brand that doesn't really draw me in and doesn't really intrigue me and there's not really anything from them that I would like to try. So this is one that just doesn't really catch my eye. Next up is actually a product I don't think you guys know I even have in my collection or purchased because I haven't done my final no buy update to haul all of those products. But this is the Oma by Sharon C Lip Tint and Oil and Gloss. This is a very interesting product. I don't have any formulas like this in my collection. It does sort of smell like a little bit chemically. So if you don't like that, I would not recommend purchasing this, but it's a tint and oil and gloss. So it almost stains your lips while being obviously like that oily finish, but it's also a little bit glossy. I don't know. It's a really, really interesting formula and very unique. I definitely would be interested in trying more from Oma by Sharon C. This is, if you didn't know, basically like Oma Beauty's drugstore brand. So I was at Walmart one day and just went browsing and I did pick this up. There were also a couple other products I was interested in trying, but this one I feel like is the one that I would have just got the most use out of. So that's why I chose this one. There are a few other products from her that I would like to try. So this is another brand where, again, it's a newer brand, so they don't have a ton of products out, but I would be interested in trying more products from her and also seeing what they come out with in the future. 
these next couple products, the last two we have here, are ones that I debated talking about because they are more skincare, but I figured I'd just throw them in at the end here if any of you were interested. So the first one is from Australian Gold. It's their plant-based lotion sunscreen, and I've almost finished this. I did enjoy this, but I feel like this kind of stung my eyes sometimes. Like, obviously, I don't put it in my eyes, but throughout the day, as like my oils are coming through and stuff is sort of moving around on my face and maybe I'm touching my eyes my eyes can start to sting and I find that it's only when I apply this so I did also like I've recently been trying another sunscreen that one kind of also makes my eyes sting so I don't know I'm kind of struggling to find a sunscreen that really works for me that doesn't like bother my eyes or bother my skin but this I did enjoy. I feel like Australian Gold doesn't have a ton of products in their line. Maybe they just don't have a wide range at Ulta because again, that is where I got this from. So I feel like they mostly just have like sunscreens. They have a tinted sunscreen that looks interesting and I feel like I've heard good things about, but I feel like I just wouldn't repurchase this and they mostly only have sunscreens. So yeah, I'm not really tempted to try a lot more from this brand. And then the last product we have here is a skincare brand, Good Molecules. This is their daily brightening serum. And with serums, I feel like, I don't know, with skincare in general, it's hard to tell like if they actually do anything because there could be like so many different variables that like affect your skin. So you can't really tell what's doing what. And I did enjoy this. I don't know if it really did a ton for my skin, but Good Molecules is a brand I've been wanting to try. I did end up just purchasing this from them because I needed like some kind of serum, like daily serum, or I felt like I wanted some kind of daily serum. So there are a lot of their other products that do intrigue me and I will probably eventually end up purchasing. But also Good Molecules isn't as like drugstore priced as I think thought because their oils are like they're about the same price as the ordinary except you get way less products so I thought they were similar to the ordinary it's like ten dollars for one of their face oils and it's the same for the ordinary but the ordinary you get one ounce and good molecules you get like 0.4 ounces or 0.5 ounces or something so good molecules is actually a lot more expensive than the ordinary and i've recently been interested in the inky list this is like very off topic but the inky list i've been really interested in and kind of wavering towards them more than good molecules i feel like good molecules was hyped up to be like a really inexpensive brand which like they still are for like skincare but i'm just not as interested in them as i once was there are a few products i would still like to try from their line though so i probably will end up trying more from good molecules after trying this i don't know i'm not like really intrigued in them and also after realizing that the products are more expensive than i thought they were so i probably eventually will end up purchasing a couple more products from good molecules that i'm interested in trying but this like didn't do anything amazing for my skin, at least that I noticed. So that is it for all of the brands or at least the brands that I have here with me at school for the products where I only own one from. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments what other types of videos you guys would like to see from me. And I do post new videos about three times a week. So if you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.